Hi, I'm Justin Gubo with Precision Agri Services, and today we're going to talk about some normal maintenance items on a John Deere row unit. Now, when, even though today this is a John Deere row unit, um, the maintenance items are very similar on other OEMs across the industry as well. So I'm going to start at the bar and work my way back, and then we're going to talk about different components. Might not be OEM, but might be third-party stuff that might be a better option for you aftermarket than the standard OEMs if it comes to replacing that componentry. So starting from the bar back, we're going to start with the parallel arms. So in this case, we have an upper and lower parallel arm side of things. The tolerance for these parallel arms is 3 eighths of an inch. So what that means is if I was to get behind the row unit here and I was to pick this row unit up, I should only be able to pick it up 3 eighths of an inch play. If I'm able to pick it up more than that, then the parallel arms are wore out. And when you're looking at that, you try to look and see where that play is at in that bushing. If it's in the uppers, if it's in the lowers, or both, to deem what necessaries need to be replaced. So if you see in this row unit in particular, we've already replaced this all the worn out parts with new parts. That's when you see me lifting this up. There's not much play at all in the row unit, okay? If I come over here to the row unit next to it, this is a worn out row unit that we had taken off a planter. I come behind here and you see me lifting up. You can see, and I can look at the parallel arms, and I can see that the majority of the play is up here on the uppers and down here on the lowers. So in this situation, based on the play and the deemness, I'm gonna deem that I'm not gonna be able to get it within 3 8 tolerance, so I'm gonna have to replace both parts, okay? The thing is, is what, what parts do I replace then? Where do I get them from? What's the, what's the best options out there? So you can go to your OEM supplier, you can buy the same parallel arm, run at the same acres. You could put that on the first year, tighten it up, lift it up, and if you were to go to this OEM per se and get their quality that they're coming out with right now, you're gonna have about 3 8 play in it brand new. So it's gonna be round tolerance or worn out from brand new. Or you can look at other options on the aftermarket side, like GBGI for instance, where we run a bushing on bushing style on the arms. What that allows us to do is, this is a machined outer bushing, which is hardened, and then we have a machine inner bushing that is softer than the outer bushing. So what that means is, in the future, there's no way for this outer bushing to get oblonged because this inner bushing is a softer bushing. On a standard row unit on the OEM side, all they have is a punched outer piece of metal and they have a bushing they slide in there. And what happens is, is that bushing's not soft enough and that arm starts to egg shape and that's why you get that play in those arms. So even if you change the bushings out on that, it's not gonna do you any good. So a better alternative in this situation is a bushing on bushing style that will allow your row unit, as you've seen, with a lot less play in the parallel arms. In this particular setup on the lower parallel arms, you'll see that there's an extra casting built in. So I'll show you this. This is for a hydraulic downforce setup on a planter. So if you had a hydraulic downforce on your planter and you were wanting to replace your parallel arms, you see you have your standard casting that Deere has, but then up front here, you have what the delta force bracket is molded into it. So it's all one piece. It's a much heavier, more rigid parallel arm. A lot of guys are looking at going this way on the hydraulic downforces because they're putting their parallel arms through a lot worse conditions than what they used to, okay? So on the parallel arm side of things, before I branch on the rest of the row unit, I also want to point out there are other options as well. It's not just John Deere. There's Kenzie options. There's case options as well that we can do on replacements. And for instance, this Kenzie, this is for a 3000 series row unit. The biggest thing you'll notice, this is a casted piece of steel. Kenzie from OEM is not a cast lower parallel arm. It's a bent steel welded parallel arm. So that allows the system to tweak and row units can get bent. On the casting side of things, it's very hard to bend casting. You usually just break it in most situations. So beyond the parallel arm side of things, we're gonna make our way down the row unit. So coming down here to your gauge wheel side of things with your gauge wheel arm, it's very important that this gauge wheel, when it is in working condition in the field, is up tight against this double disc opener and that there's no notches, divots, and broken pieces taken out of this gauge wheel, okay? For every gap that you have in between this gauge wheel and the double disc opener would allow dry dirt to fall down in a trench, give you inconsistent seed depth, and also could give you uh, inconsistent emergence at the same time depending on the conditions after planting. So the two things to watch out there, your standard gauge wheel arm adjustment is a nut design 
where when you lift this up, you can take this nut and you can loosen it and bring it in. The downside behind that is with those screw adjustment, you get a lot of play in there. So, and it doesn't stay from one year to the next. So you might start the season with them tight up against the gauge wheel the way you want it, but halfway through the season, they're loose again and they're wobbly and moving. So there's other options out there in the industry. For instance, in this case, I've got on display a GBGI gauge wheel arm. So it's a double roll, single roll bearing style arm. Uh, if you look, it is completely greaseless, so it's maintenance free. The arm is hardened, and the way you set this arm, which is in this case on the row unit, is the same bolt, and then we do a washer style to shim this out in this instance. So a lot of guys have enjoyed having a lot less maintenance. The joy of changing double disc openers is you don't get grease all over your hands as well. So that becomes a plus as we're doing maintenance on the row units. Along with that, I'm gonna talk about the blades, so the double disc opener blades. So GBGI has an option on double disc opener blades as well. Theirs is a 204 double rib bearing. It's on a 3.5 millimeter blade with the oversized riveting and the cast hubs. Uh, they're very proud of this design. We've had very good luck with this design. The other thing that they do whenever they do the machining side of things is uh, the run out side is very important. And that's how consistent that blade wobble is. So if you're having problems setting blades when you're checking them with business cards where Sometimes they're touching an inch, sometimes they're touching two and a half inches. That's the run out of the blades. That's how inconsistent they are. So I challenge you to maybe look at an aftermarket company that's doing a very good job on the run out side that's focused on quality over quantity to maybe get a better job and better performance that way when setting the blades for in the field as well. So beyond the blades, these things are heat treated as well for about 30% more life. So they're heat treated on the outside in, still allows for the proper blade flex so you don't break the blades but then allows for the more wear. So beyond the blades, we're gonna come back here to the tailing assemblies. So if you're instance of this tailing assembly, if you see here, it has a, a welded resist collar on the outside here. It has a bearing system in here and a bolt. So this tailing assembly used to be wore out. It was deemed wore out. Welded this aftermarket kit from RK on there. Now you come back here and you try and pull this tailing assembly, it doesn't move. That's gonna keep your tailing assembly and your closing wheels lined up properly to your true V trench, which is very important. If that gets off to one side or another, if you have a more aggressive closing wheel, it could come in there with a spike and it could flick your seeds out and put them on top of the ground. You don't want that. Over here in this row unit, you can see a wore out one. See how much play that is. That might allow that wheel to get into that trench and cause emergency issues. So it's very important as we look into adding maybe technology on your row units, that the base structure of your planter in your row units, iron in particular, is of sound condition. Because all the technology in the world can't fix a iron issue on a row unit. So I'm Justin Gubo with Precision Agri Services. If you have any more questions, give us a call.